welcome to the Episcopal Church of Our Savior of Madison County on this day as we celebrate the national holiday of Juneteenth. Whether you join us here in the sanctuary or join us virtually, we are all united together in Christ's love. I give special thanks to our music director who has chosen some wonderful music that um, is from the African-American tradition and it is part of our celebration of the Juneteenth holiday today. I want to thank Jamie and Ollie and Louise and Michelle and Anna, Tristan, Zachary, Susanna for all of their hard work in um, yesterday in our participation both in the Juneteenth event in downtown Richmond as well as the Pride Festival. Um, they've done amazing work and represented our church uh, really well. I ask that you leave the bulletin insert with the music in your pews at the end of the service and we will be able to reuse um, those inserts. Um, as we are harvesting from the Garden for the Hungry, we are always in need of more volunteers. And so if you can volunteer some time, please speak to Jane or Ollie. There is a sign-up sheet in the narthex for anybody that would like to provide some refreshments for our Sunday fellowship. Um, we have to replace two of the units in the HVAC um, in our sanctuary, so we don't have um, air conditioning at the moment. Um, I'm not going to be wearing my chasuble this morning because with three layers of clothing, it's going to be too warm. <laughs> but it's going to be a significant expense for our parish to pay for these um, new HVC units. And so anybody that would like to make an extra donation to help us cover those costs, it would be greatly appreciated. And I'd like to ask our senior warden, Michelle Bohr, if she would come up and talk about our Love Your Church Day that is planned for this coming Saturday morning. Michelle? Yeah, we actually have two events um, related to upkeep of the grounds and the parish mission house this week. On Tuesday, um, at 10 o'clock in the morning, some of us are gonna meet in the parish mission house to just finish getting it up in shape. And we are almost done, the kitchen will be done and on Monday, um, and we're just moving some big things out to the road and cleaning up a little bit, um, doing a little bit of extra paint and nothing strenuous. 10 o'clock Tuesday, if you can come. And then on Saturday, we have a parish event. Anybody that can come um, early morning, probably 8, 8 or 8.30, will get started to try to beat the heat. Um, to try to help um, just with the outside grounds, some, and then also cleaning in the parish mission house. So if you can come to either of those events. I'm sure Leslie's in charge of Saturday, so I'm sure we'll have some food or donuts or something good. So please, please come. Thank you, Michelle. Our opening hymn is hymn number 648, When Israel Was in Egypt's Land.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. First Kings 19, 1 through 15a. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me and more also if I do not make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid. He got up and fled for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. He left his servant there, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he laid down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand by the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind so strong that it was splitting mountains, and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. 
but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Psalm 42 and 43 are in the Book of Common Prayer, pages 643 through 645, and the congregation will read the verses responsibly. <clears throat> As the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul is nourished to God. My tears have been my food day and night, while all day long they say to me, Where now is your God? I pour out my soul when I think of these things. How I went with the multitude and led them into the house of God. With the voice of praise and thanksgiving among those who keep holy day. Why are you so full of bitterness, O oh my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God, for I will yet give thanks to him who is the help of my countenance and my God. My soul is heavy within me. Therefore I will remember you from the land of Jordan and from the feet of the fire among the house of Carmel. One deep calls to another in the noise of your cataracts. All your rapids and floods have gone over me. The Lord grants his loving kindness in the daytime. In the night season, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I will say to the God of my strength, Why have you forgotten me, and why do I go so heavily while the enemy oppresses me? While well, my bones are being broken, my enemies mock me. All day long they mock me and say to me, Where now is your God? Why are you so full of heaviness, O oh my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God, for I will yet give thanks to him, who is the help of my countenance and my God. Give judgment to me, O oh God, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. Deliver me from the deceitful and the wicked. For you are the God of my strength. Why have you put me from you? And why do I go so heavily while the enemy oppresses me? Send out your light and your truth, that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. That I may go to the altar of God, to the God of my joy and gladness. And on the harp I will give thanks to you, O God, my God. Why are you so full of heaviness, O oh my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God, for I will yet give thanks to him, who is the help of my countenance and my God. A reading from Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 3, verses 23 through 29. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as, many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus, and if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As Jesus stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons have entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there were on the hillside a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herd saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone, begging that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. For there is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. I'm proud every day to be someone who follows Jesus and is an Episcopalian. Yesterday, I was especially proud to be an Episcopal priest serving this parish because of the awesome members of our church who actively participated in two events in Richmond, the Juneteenth celebration organized by the Richmond Madison County chapter of the NAACP and the Pride Festival. It was a joyous day filled with positive energy and sharing God's love with others in our community. Both of these events are important because they represent joy and celebration by two groups of human beings who have been discriminated against throughout our nation's history. Today is the national Juneteenth holiday in America. And although Juneteenth is our nation's oldest known celebration commemorating the end of slavery, it was not made an official federal holiday until last year. And the name is a blend of the words June and 19th. And it commemorates June 19th, 1865. That was the day that Union Army Major General Gordon Granger rode into Galveston, Texas and issued General Order Number 3, proclaiming that the enslaved African Americans there were free. What is so interesting is freedom for the enslaved people there came two and a half years after 
President Abraham had issued the Emancipation Proclamation. Two and a half years because that proclamation could not be enforced in areas under Confederate control. And so on June 19th in 1865, they were granted freedom. It came about two months after the Confederate General Robert E. Lee had surrendered to the Union Army. The history of the Pride Festivals date back to June 28, 1970, when the first Pride Marches were held in New York, Los Angeles, and Chicago. And now the month of June is celebrated as Pride Month, and Pride Festivals are held throughout the month in cities and countries around the world. Now one might ask, what does this have to do with Christianity and following Jesus? In the Episcopal Church, we have a long and honored tradition of welcoming African Americans and members of the LGBTQ plus community. In the Episcopal Church, we are blessed to have our presiding bishop and many bishops, priests, deacons, and laypersons who are African American. The Episcopal Church was the first mainline Christian denomination to consecrate an openly gay bishop, and today we have openly gay and transgender bishops, priests, deacons, and lay members. And we've all been enriched by having them as fellow Episcopalians. In the Episcopal Church, we proclaim that our church is loving, liberating and life-giving. We want to share God's love with all other people because we believe that that's what it means to follow Jesus. The Bible begins with the book of Genesis in which we're told that God created humans in God's own image and blessed them. And then in the last chapter, of the Bible in the Revelation to John, we read, it is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come. And let everyone who hears say, come. And let everyone who wishes to take the water of life as a gift. This is a call to us as Christians to recognize the image of God in each person we meet and to invite them to come, come and experience our church as loving, liberating, and life-giving. Even though every human being is created in God's image, as humans, we are wont to create categories that separate us one from another. We are all children of God, and the blood that courses through our veins and sustains our being is red. Despite our common humanity and heritage as God's beloved children, we create categories and distinctions among us that divide us. And these categories are created out of fear or greed for material wealth, as well as social and political power. Human beings create laws that discriminate against people based on race, ethnicity, religion, and gender. These laws deprive innocent men, women, and children of fundamental human and civil rights. And this has been true throughout human history. The Old Testament is full of Exodus stories of people exiled from their homeland and oppressed by their captors. Exodus stories continue to unfold daily in many parts of the world. Think of Ukraine and many other countries. Marginalized people can relate to the words of the psalmist we heard this morning who said, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. As Christians, we are called to respond, to help others, 
and share God's love with him. Paul, in his letter to the early Christian community in Galatia, wanted to help them understand that their unity was based on their being children of God. He said, in Jesus Christ, you are all children of God through faith. And many of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. Paul did not want people to be defined according to laws made by humans that isolated, separated, and divided people. And during Paul's lifetime, laws separated people based on, for men, whether or not they were circumcised, and other people were depending on what they ate. So today, we also have laws that isolate, separate, divide, and discriminate against people. Paul taught that God has done a new thing in Christ. Christ has the power to reconcile all things and make things new. Christ has, with God, made one body, one body out of an infinitely varied tapestry of diverse peoples. Abraham was promised by God that he would be the father of all nations, all people. The family of Abraham, which was once divided, can be united by faith in the risen, crucified Christ. And God gave us the spirit of his son so that we may perform the works of Christ. And God calls us to be united in a fellowship in which all of God's children are loved affirmed and welcomed home. Let us all play our part in continuing to provide that welcoming home to everyone we meet. And let us do so in the name of Jesus Christ, our teacher, our healer, and our redeemer. Amen. I invite you to Stand as we say our statement of faith, the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made a man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge our baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Form 3 in the Book of Common Prayer, page 387. 
Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be blessed. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. And that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your words and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Pray for all those who have died in gun violence and for the three people killed and those wounded at a shooting on June 16th at St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in Vestavia, Alabama. Please pray for comfort, strength, and guidance for the parishioners, clergy, and staff of St. Stephen's in their community. May those who have died rest eternally and their families be comforted. Give to, to the departed eternal rest. To that life perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May they also come to share with your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For Bob Kilborn, Bob Berger, Leslie, Jim, Trish, Tom, Tammy, Alexis, Giles, Jacinda, Breeden family, Yvonne, Jamie, Angie, Lauren, Ryan, Miranda, Karen, Glenn, Terry, Hank, Charles, Shirley and Danny, Wade, Hannah, In the Anglican Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the Episcopal Church of South Sudan. In the Diocesan Cycle of Prayer, we pray for Walnut Hill Church, Lexington, and the Reverend Michael Ward, pastor. In Richmond, we pray for St. Thomas Lutheran Church, the Reverend Mary Mester, and their members. Loving God, look gently upon fathers of newborn and young children. Give them energy, patience, and happiness in these fleeting days of long nights, diapers too numerous to count, and loading cars with strollers. Bless dads who are raising school-aged children and teenagers, dads who coach teens and stay up late helping with homework, Show them joy in the moments that seem hard and wonderful all at the same time. Bless dads who watch their adult children live their own lives. Give these fathers perspective and wisdom. Healing God, comfort all people who mourn the absence of their father today from death or illness or because of broken relationships. Comfort those who have hoped to be fathers but have been unable to do so and embrace those who long to be dads. Ever-present God, hold up those fathers who mourn the loss of their own children or grieve over their broken relationships with their children. Beloved Jesus, Son of God, help us to recognize all the men who have guided us and loved us like fathers, men who sent a light forth as an example of the light you shine upon all your beloved children. Bless us and keep us today in your light. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you. My own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church and give to us that peace and unity of that heavenly church where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Amen. 
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. or anniversaries to celebrate today? Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord.
It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, Almighty God, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Christ. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior, by Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Sweet, 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 sweet.
us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The wisdom of God, the love of God, and the grace of God strengthen you to be Christ's hand and heart in the world. Our closing hymn is Lift Every Voice and Sing the National Anthem of African Americans. <laughs> Alleluia. Thanks be to God.